Hey, it's time for VoiceOver Body Shop Tech Talk number 78. You mean there's still new tech to talk about, Dan? It's like it, it never ends. There's <laughs> always something new here on VoiceOver Body Shop. <laughs> and we got lots of cool stuff to talk about tonight. If you've got a question for us about VoiceOver technology, you know, something that's way over your head or way under your head. Um, <laughs> If, if, if there's something you want to know about technology, about how to record properly, all the things that go into trying to record your audio, throw your question in the chat room. We will be thrilled, thrilled to ask, to answer your question and uh, get you the right answer. So that's really important. So go into the chat room and go do that. Anyway, we're going to talk. We've got an interview tonight, uh, or at least a teaser of an teaser, interview. A good eight minutes of the interview. It's a very long interview. Yeah, but uh, but it's about a, a studio. It's a studio log. You're going to learn about what went into designing and building a very pretty high, Im impressive home studio. I just like it because he has a bathroom. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> all that and more on Voice Over Body Shop coming up right now. It's time for Tech Talk. From the outer reaches, they came. Bearing the knowledge of what it takes to properly record your voiceover audio. And together, from the center of the VO universe, they bring it to you now. George Widom, the engineer to the VO stars, a Virginia Tech grad with the skills to build, set up, and maintain the professional VO studios of the biggest names in VO today. And you, Dan Leonard, the voiceover home studio master. A professional voice talent with the knowledge and experience to help you create a professional sounding home VO studio. And each week, they allow you into their world, making the complex simple, debunking the myths of what it takes to create great sounding audio, answering your questions, showing you the latest and greatest in VO tech, and having a dandy time doing it. Welcome to VoiceOver Body Shop Tech Talk. VoiceOver Body Shop Tech Talk is brought to you by VoiceOverEssentials.com, home of Harlan Hogan Signature Products, Source Elements, remote studio connections for everyone, VoiceActorWebsites.com, where your VO website isn't a pain in the butt, VOHeroes.com, become a hero to your clients with award-winning voiceover training, J. Michael Collins Demos, when quality matters. And VoiceOver Extra, your daily resource for VO success. And now, live to thrive from their super secret clubhouse and studio in Sherman Oaks, California. Here are the guys. Well, hello there. I'm Dan Leonard. And I'm George Whittem. And this is VoiceOver Body Shop or VO. B S Tech Talk Tech Talk Tech Talk Tech Talk Tech Talk. See now I got to put Holman's thing on this. Yeah 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 yeah. So I'll fly that into you. Yeah thank you. That would help a whole lot. Well we're here to talk about home voiceover studios and you know I was thinking about this the other day George that you know there's a lot of people trying to get into voiceover and and we talk to them every day now more than ever more more than ever you know last week we were talking about audio drama now we're going to have all these people wanting to get into audio drama um and people don't understand the basic the simple little basic stuff that allows us to be voice actors online and that's the ability to record properly it's not as hard as it seems but people tend tend to think that I've got to get the most expensive microphone. I've got to get the most expensive booth. I've got to spend thousands and thousands of dollars to make myself sound great. Well, we'll tell you. The idea mm -hmm. is not to make you sound great. It's to make you sound like you and nothing else. Because, you know, the, the most important thing is that if everybody keeps talking about broadcast quality. And what is broadcast quality? Well, it doesn't mean anything anymore. It simply means that your audio doesn't sound bad. It means your audio is good enough to get hired. Right. Exactly. <laughs> you know, and, and if nobody's complaining, it's broadcast quality. Right. You know, essentially, you know, there's the idea that there's your voice and then there's everything else. Mm -hmm. You want to eliminate the everything else, That's which right. is, you know, outside noise, reflection of your voice, 
uh, the sound of your computer fan, all those sorts of things. You can get rid of that. Uh, but it's more important that you physically set up your environment right and you know how to use your equipment. Uh, and mm -hmm. another point, you know, you don't buy great equipment to get work. You work to get great equipment. And once you have any equipment, if you need to know how to use it, there's only a couple of places you can go. I mean, some people can tell you that it's like, okay, well, you know, you could use this great mic or you could use this, you know, channel strip. And, you know, everybody's an expert in one studio of their own. George and I have literally been doing this a com over 30 years combined. We've seen everything, you know. At least we think we've, I mean, at least we think we've seen everything until we see something new. And go, when they start uh, saying we need to use, record voice actors with a five channel microphone array, we'll know things are changing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I'm sure it's done somewhere for some Disney film or something, but yeah. if you want real proper instruction on how to do it right, you got to talk to the guys that actually know it inside out backwards upside down and sideways and that would be mr would and myself and we don't say it because we're egotistical we say it because this is what we do and we know what it's supposed to sound like the acronym whistle what, what it's, supposed, it's supposed, supposed to, to sound, sound like. like right so if you would like to work with mr widham who has an extensive website and lots of videos and lots of stuff <laughs> where would they go they would go over to George the dot tech. And if you're booking a service, use my coupon code VOBS fan 2020 for 20% off. Um, that will get you a discount on anything 20, that's 22, 2022. Thank you. <laughs> Just, I've ruined Thank a couple you. of checks already. I appreciate it. <laughs> 2022 and you get 20% off and that is uh, going to work for webinars, anything that's scheduled webinars, support sessions, things like that. But that's all over at George the dot tech and uh all of our services are there yes it's a bit of a mess it's a very wordy website <laughs> just take your time look through the menu and if you go hi my eyes are rolling there's too many uh don't worry too many options just contact us and we'll steer you in the right direction for what service that you might need so don't freak out okay but if you have a different idea about tech support maybe you want to try my buddy that's him over there dan oh yeah over at homevoiceoverstudio.com. And, you know, I love working with people who like to ask lots of questions because I ask even more. Uh, it's to me, it's very, very important. You know, just being a voice actor itself is pretty difficult because you got to be a good voice actor and then you have to learn how to record properly and all those sorts of things. But mostly I ask, how does this affect your lifestyle? How can we create a space that is not going to interfere with the rest of your life? Because it is going to be your private space to go do what you need to do to be a voice actor. And so I ask a lot of questions like that. Where is the best place to record in your home or your apartment or your backyard? I've done it. <laughs> I've done it. So I, you know, it can be done back there. Um, all you have to do is contact me. If you have a studio set up uh, and you want a consultation on, on how to use it better, uh, first I need to hear what it sounds like. And I have my specimen collection cup over at homevoiceoverstudio.com. If you scroll to the bottom of the page, it'll soon be at the top of the page. We're almost ready to go live with that. Uh, but you click on that. It's a Dropbox. And for $25, I will be happy to do a very thorough analysis of your audio if there are shortcomings to it, if there are problems, I will explain them. Uh, if it sounds great, I'm going to say, sounds great, <laughs> you know. Uh, but, of course, you can, you, you can always ask follow-up questions on that as well, which is, is really important. So go on over to homevoiceoverstudio.com and contact me there. Okay, it's time for, you know, and in, in progress... <laughs> George's tech update for this week. I'm always finding more things. I'm like, oh, I should talk I should talk about that. I don't want to forget that. <laughs> but but first we, we we had we had a little we had a we actually did a package this afternoon. We did. On location. No less. We got to uh, head over to a client of mine, Ben Pronsky, who runs the voice correct me if I say it wrong. Voice, voice Actors voice Network. Actors Network. Um is a voice actor of his own right. Um who designed uh with 
I helped design a uh, a studio into his garage, but it has some particular issues that we had to sort out. So we shot a very long video, a long interview. I cut together a short version of it uh, to show you guys right now. And if you want to see the full thing later, it's going to be on my website and it will link it on to the Facebook and for, for, for VOBS. So you don't miss the, the long cut. But anyway, so let's check out that little package. It should be sitting there ready to go. For VOBS. I am at a client studio that I've worked with for a mm, couple of years now to get the perfect home studio situation built and perhaps a less than perfect location. And maybe in a minute, you'll see what I mean. <laughs> so you see there's a bit of a problem with this location. Just a bit. Hey Just a bit. With a little airline like Southwest. Yeah, they're a lot louder. <laughs> <laughs> But it doesn't matter now, right, Ben? Not at all. Not at all. That's it's good. a beautiful thing. That's nothing. The freight airliners are the worst. Like the FedEx and yeah, stuff? Yeah, the FedEx and, yeah. The FedEx, and FedEx and UPS. 7.30 every day. Yeah. yeah. Right right after Jeopardy. Oh, I, I have Southwest schedule memorized. <laughs> I got it down. This is a two-car garage, right? A two-car garage. Just a standard two-car garage. Mm -hmm. Come on in. Let's take a look. It's really comfy in here. This is an AZU. In the booth, doing what he does. Can you hear me? How about I give you some venom? Peter Parker! I will destroy you, Peter! <laughs> These doors were custom made for the space overseas. Yeah, in <laughs> Indonesia. In Indonesia. Yeah. So the, only the finest teak. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. Look at the air gap. That so that's freaking crazy. Wow. That's that a is. one and a half inch gap all the way around. And that was the big thing is, you know, what we learned was the level of low end frequency that we were dealing with. We had to truly decouple. And oh, yeah. So this is this is a completely decoupled construction. It's you know, channel the, strips and all that. Technically, no. the only coupling would be this piece of concrete right here. Right. This is it's it's not a cut slab, yeah, which it's, some studios do. Yeah, right. concrete it's, doesn't really carry sound sound very well. Much. It's really right. low, 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 low stuff. So and then all of this is hardwired except for my Bluetooth mouse. So it's all connected directly to Ethernet on the outside of the of the booth. Yeah, hardwired is the way to go. Yeah. You know, it's, and this size triad orbit was perfect for it mm -hmm. because this, the booth is only five by six, so it's not mm -hmm. a huge booth. No, it's I mean, perfect size. It's a good size, though. Yeah. It'll fit Plenty two people. Plenty of room for a with, chair. I've, I've been doing some podcast recording. People are using the space to do podcasts in here, and yeah. it's comfortable with two tall oh. chairs. And yeah. I've got the, the 4073 directional here, and I've got the TLM 103, so, mm -hmm. yeah. you know. Everything was, things, everything was custom made, to obviously, to fit in the space. Right. The table was cut. Everything was drawn and yeah. measured we, and agonized over. Every square inch of this place yeah. was agonized over. The big thing is that instead of just going with standard, like, 24 by panels, your recommendation, George, was to just, just cover the walls with panels. And, the, like, this one, for example, is just one large panel with monolithic insulation, panel. you know? And, uh, you know, and then the other big thing, obviously, is that we have an ERV system in the closet outside that's pumping fresh air from outside into this space. So we have the central air and, and in addition, we have the ERV that's pumping fresh air in, which is That's a big awesome. deal. Not everybody, yeah. well, actually most people studios don't do that. Yeah. And not especially like a quote unquote home studio. Mm. This is definitely like, this is beyond the home studio. <laughs> this is definitely next level. Well, I mean, but you, you could know, sit in here and work comfortably for hours. I do. I do. I mean, the majority of my work is group ADR where you're doing a movie for eight hours, mm -hmm. you know, so you're literally sitting in the booth for, you know, hours on end. But the, you know, the big difference was it wasn't just for personal use because of voice actors network. I wanted to be able to host like a workout group or a class here. Mm -hmm. And that was sort of the original purpose. But then when the pandemic hit, it was like, oh, right. Never mind. That's not <laughs> right. Just, yeah. They're so great. We got yeah. four if, inches, know, four inches here. Mm -hmm. We have, is it four inches on this the is, ceiling? This is three? actually three, oh, three, three inches. and a half. This is six. 
Oh, we got six on the ceiling? I so forgot. Six, yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Is all rock wool or? All rock wool. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Is that wall also three or three and a half? Is three that the same half. as this? Yeah, all these are three and a half on the and walls. And then the ceiling there. cloud is is the uh, the six inch. Very nice. But I, I tell you what, come in here and close both these doors. Is that door? It's very cool. Don't think I've been in a room this quiet. All we can hear is our <laughs> tintiness. <laughs> yeah, it's That's extremely it. loud in here, as a matter of fact. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you going to play some... Did you just Did you just watch me talk into the headphones like a <laughs> microphone? Did everybody see that? I, I have it on tape. Just want to make sure. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you're hearing us. Play some, play some music so we can hear if there's any bleed. Okay, coming, he is. I think he's event. blasting some Star Wars right now. Yeah, it's. I, I know it's blasting. I can tell. I'm looking at the view meter on the Apollo, and it is cranked. It is like That's blasting. Great. That's great. <laughs> wow, that is good, man. So we were talking a little bit earlier. How long ago did the project start in, in earnest? Where you were like, okay, I got a team. We're ready to go. I paid a deposit. How long ago was that? We broke ground in October of 20. We filed for the permits in November 19, and it took almost a year to get the permits from the city of Burbank. That's better than the city of Los Angeles. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) right, right. But then, obviously, when the pandemic hit, it slowed everything down as far as the processing time. And then we started to run into stuff with the contractor where supplies weren't available or, you know, a lot of that stuff started to rear its ugly head. Uh, But yeah, October of 20 was when we actually started the construction and got things underway. So, and we were bare bones. So, yeah. So it wasn't breaking ground. It was sledgehammering and... Sledgehammering. There was trenching because we had all the utilities because it's not just the studio where it's it's uh, an ADU, an alternate dwelling unit, and through the city, if you're going to have gas, water, electric, they had to do the trenching. We had to get, you know, the approval process along that way. So um, the, the studio, the booth was kind of a separate entity, so... So ADU is a new thing that didn't start much longer before. You, I mean, it was pretty new before you chose to go the ADU route, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Which is all about a certain type of permitting, I guess, to allow you to have more residential square feet yeah. on your lot than normally permitted so that we can get more housing in Los Angeles. Right? Yeah, that was a, it was because of the housing crisis. They started to sort of expedite the process of permitting so that, uh, you know, there's more mother-in-laws living in the back house. I guess, mm-hmm. <laughs> instead of in the house with you, which is, you know. Or in Florida. In Florida. <laughs> right, right, yeah. All right. Yeah, so that, that was the, the little package we cut today. It, it goes on for a lot longer than that. If you really want to know kind of the, the, the nitty gritty of what went into designing and building this space, uh, check out the video. We'll, I'll, we'll get the, I'll get a final cut of that. Uh, in the next couple of days, it'll go up on the my YouTube channel, and we'll have it up on the, the VOBS socials, so you can't miss it. But anyway, that was that was fun, and, and I was glad Dan could join in. It was that made it even more fun. It was, you know, and we got to have lunch too. But that's oh, yeah. besides the point. But yeah, it was nice of Ben Miller to invite us in there. The, the thing is, is there's so many details that went into it, and and the yeah. idea is, is you don't build this to get work. You work to get something like that, and he's been yep. very successful and uh, and making a living doing voiceover, so it was essential. But you don't build something like that because you want to do it. You build it because you're doing yeah, it. Yeah, later he mentioned he's been in the business at, on seven, some level, seven, eight 17, years. 18 yeah. years, but yeah. as a full-time voice actor, about eight years. Yeah. So there you have it. There you have it. All right. Um, in other news, uh, I don't have a ton of news, but a couple – couple of things the apple max studio computer that i was obsessing about when it came out and then i realized after reading reviews talking to people that you know in facebook like uh i have a facebook group called mac and ios for vo um i posted about it there saying hey how's it going can you hear the fan because i saw some youtuber probably trying to get clicks posting audio of, of of the noisy fan right 
And the bottom line was that anybody that's going to be using it for anything that we in our world are going to, is going to do will make the, keep the fans running at such a low speed. You will have no clue that are even on. Like that's what everybody is saying. The fans are essentially silent. Um, if you are doing uh, heavy, heavy duty, uh, really heavy duty video production or rendering of photo, photogrammetry, heavy duty stuff, maybe then the fans might be audible. But my my contact said, yeah, we were trying to, we were doing some 4K, uh, you know, uncompressed video editing, and we thought we were going to make it break a sweat. Nah. Not even close. It's a seriously, seriously powerful computer. I still contend that any of you who watch the show who are into voiceover and really just want your next studio computer, the Mac Mini M1 is with, and I would get the 16 gigs of RAM, the memory upgrade, which you have to wait a little while to get that. It's absolutely worth waiting for that extra, extra bit of memory. It does help. You're going to be very happy. Mine and Dan as well have, we've just had excellent experiences, very quiet computers, drama free. So anyway, if you get the studio, it's bragging rights, right? And if you wait until June, or I think it's, uh, that's the next uh, worldwide de developers conference and you buy the, whatever the next Mac pro is, well, touch you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And it's, it takes up a little bit more space than a, than a Mac mini. Yeah. It's like a double stack, triple stack Oreo <laughs> version of the Mac mini, right? Same exact footprint. Um, other things, universal audio has realized that there's a bigger market out there for people that don't want to buy the hardware, uh, and just want to use any old audio interface. So they finally decided that they'll license their plugins without their hardware. And it's called spark. Who is this for? Most, but not most of you, not really. So, but um, if you do, if you're already bought into the Apollo Sphere, uh, a Universal Audio UAD plugin world, um, an API Vision Channel Strip, or different plugins that you rely on your, for your sound as part of your life, then maybe you want Spark <laughs> so that you can take your, say, your MicPort Pro on the road, a little tiny MicPort Pro instead of a big old Apollo and still have the same plugin chain with you. Okay, that's who it's for. It's really not that big a deal, but it's kind of the thing that's created a little bit of a buzz in the universal audio users groups. So I thought you guys should know about it. And another yeah. plugin news and the last thing is uh, we did an interview on the Pro Audio Suite podcast from a company called GPU Audio, and their website is gpu.audio. And this is the geekiest of the geeky stuff, right? So this is creating platforms for recording and processing audio that do all the processing on the GPU, not the CPU. The CPU is what's always done that work on all of our computers, but there's all these extra parts on the computer whose job is typically for graphics. So these guys are saying, what about taking advantage of all that hardware and putting it to use for audio? So it's very bleeding edge. Um, it's really, and right now it's really a PC platform thing. But what they're saying is you could have a PC in your studio that's like a server. That's where all the processing happens. And it could be plugged into your computer over a network. And you can send audio into it and it does it incredibly low latency, like real time. And you can do incredibly heavy duty work. So this is really bleeding edge. I just thought I would bring it up because we talked about it on the podcast and it was just, Really interesting to hear about, but anybody, any of you that's, it's, you know, as fancy as tickled by the bleeding edge, extremely geeky stuff, go check out gpu.audio. One of the things I see them being able to do eventually is you could have an audio interface like one of these and hit a button and the noise floor goes away, like just goes away. Non-issue. The processing's happening all inside a GPU chip. And the, it's no latency. And it's like the magic button. That's what's going to be happening. I think you know we're going to see uh, on the horizon. And it's going to it's it's clearly going to allow you to record voiceover or any audio, uh, really almost anywhere. So it's going to be interesting. Cool. To see what comes. Yeah. Well, it was interesting being over at Ben's place. Yeah. One, one because man, those planes are loud as they go over there. Why? <laughs> why anyone would put, you know, live there. Be why? Because they got the house for a great it's, price. It's a great, it's a bargain of a place. And yeah. hey, I don't own a house. Hey, 
you know i I, i'm still renting so it's pretty odd i mean i thought he was crazy too believe me every zoom meeting we'd have and we'd be talking he'd be sitting in that empty garage you know and we we were interrupted every few minutes yeah yeah no it came out okay yeah and i i was i was pretty impressed people just need to understand that one quick comment Mm -hmm. the difference between i don't know how many times i've said this between soundproofing and acoustical treatment they are two different physical things Mm -hmm. the next person that says i'm going to get some soundproof foam i am going to (laughs) i'm going to be nice to them but i i may use that soundproof foam to keep them from saying anything uh (laughs) you know we'll we'll just put that in your mind the way you will uh it, it the stuff does not keep sound out soundproofing is what Ben did in that place, which was really expensive, but it was worth it because of where he was and the amount of work that he does. And uh, so, I mean, it would cost him a lot more money to move that house or buy a house of the equivalent of square footage, the amount of space in the garage and pick a quiet neighborhood further from the air. It would have cost a hell of a lot more than probably he spent to build it yeah so in the end he yeah. might have been winning yeah one thing's for sure he's never moving <laughs> no i think he's gonna be there for a while <laughs> anyway totally. we if you got a question for us on your home voiceover studio or just something in general about that throw it in the chat room and jeff Holm will get that to us and we will answer your questions right after this break where you can hear from our wonderful sponsors here on voiceover body shop so don't go away we'll be right back You're still watching VLBS? And now a word from Harlan Hogan and voiceoveressentials.com. Has this ever happened to you? Embarrassing. The washers on these booms? Eh, they're not so great at holding up your expensive microphone. And here's the answer. The adjustable boom stop is great. Easy to attach and works like a charm. No more droopy mic. It's simple, ingenious, and infinitely adjustable. The padded non-slip pouch fits almost any size boom arm. Unique double-loop webbing system for unlimited angle of the downstrap. Works with tripod and solid round bases. Light gray webbing lets you mark and repeat stand settings for each performer. It's three ounces of protection for your expensive microphone with free standard shipping in the continental U.S. Hold up your mic with the ABS Adjustable Boom Stop. It's that time of the show where we thank our lovely, wonderful, amazing sponsors, Source Elements, the creators of Source Connect, and a growing suite of audio production tools that allow producers to work remotely from their clients and their talent all over the world. And you'll hear so many new technologies coming out right now that work on web browsers and have these, you know, clever, cute names. I'm telling you, those are all great and they're used all the time for producing podcasts and stuff, but the jobs that actually are likely going to be paying you the big money are generally using things like, and specifically source connect because it is a tool that allows the production to flow and run the way they are accustomed to the audio flows from your mic over the internet, straight into the timeline of pro tools and the engineer gets to work, edit, do takes uh they get to pipe in direction from the from the director have the client listen in make an edit get approval it all happens real time and that's why source connect is part of a lot of the biggest and best paying production so if you feel like you're ready to be playing at that level and you're seeing that word source connect pop up more and more often on scripts it's time head over to source-elements.com and get yourself a 15-day free trial and if you need help getting it set up, George the dot tech slash SC, where I've got tutorials, tips, instructions, and services to get you up and running more easily. Anyway, thanks for listening. Let's get to those tech questions right after this. Well, hello there. I bet you weren't expecting to hear some big voiced announcer guy on your new orientation training for Snapchat, were you? This is Virgin Radio. Well, okay, we're not that innocent. There's jeans for wearing and there's jeans for working. Dickies, because I ain't here to look pretty. She's a champion of progressive values. 
a leader for California and a voice for America. It's smart. It's a phone. It's a smartphone. But it's so much more. It's a, the files are ready. Don't forget to pick up the eggs. What time is hockey practice? Check out this song. It's the end of the road for Rick. Oh, it's you and me, Rick. When hope is lost. The I-8 from BMW. Who said saving the planet couldn't be stylish? Hey, it's J. Michael Collins. Bet you think I'm going to try and sell you a demo now, huh? I think they speak for themselves. But I will give you my email. It's jmichael at jmcvoiceover.com. Now, if Dan will stop waxing his mustache for a minute, we'll get back to the show. And we're back here on VoiceOver. Great Bodies. job on that spot. I yeah. I, I look over. So I want that. I want that. Do that. It's great. Anime. Right in the house. Yeah. It, it, it's nice to have your own in-house production staff here. You know, do those <laughs> sorts of things. Anyway, again, if you've got a question about your home voiceover studio, you know, acoustics, equipment, how to use the stuff you got. Or how not to use it, or, or should are you, you buy more? Yeah, should you buy more? You know, this, I mean, we talk about that. Yeah, you could buy this, you could buy that. You know, my opinion is always like, what's the best microphone for voiceover? Probably the one you got, unless you got something that really sucks. SM7B. <laughs> sorry, sorry, the RE20. Yeah. Um, anyway. Not that we don't have these microphones, but we use them to just demonstrate how Ugh. bad they are for voiceover. Somebody sent me a clip. She's like, can you master this for a vo for an audiobook?" I said, I can. I can. I know you're, you're, the audio is done. I'll make it work. But man, it's so noisy. And like, let me guess. She didn't even tell me what the interface was. It was an SM7B. Mm -hmm. She didn't mention the interface. And I said, I can tell you're using a Scarlett. <laughs> and she wrote me back. She was using a Scarlet. Probably said at twelve o'clock. You know, so and it was just like the noise ooh. level was the hiss was insane. So please, yeah. please use the right gear, everybody. Yeah, don't use those dynamics. Anyways, if you got a question, throw it in the chat room right this second, and George and I will answer that question. We promise. If you're watching live, if you're not watching live, you missed your opportunity. Anyway, let's start off with uh, Mike Max Goldberg. Hmm. Go. Uh, he says, I realize there's a bit of ambiguity regarding the Focusrite interfaces, um, but just wondering, is there a noticeable difference between the first generation and the third generation, the current, uh, Scarlet interfaces? Uh, great though. Thanks. Great show. Thanks for doing what you do, guys. Thanks, Mike. Well, we appreciate that. Um, you know, we, the Scarlets have been around forever. Is that which one are you holding up? This right? is a first gen. That's a first gen. I think right? it's a first gen. It might now, be. It might be a second. Let's see. I think that's a first gen. You know the difference. The only way I can tell the difference is is the knob knurled or smooth. It the is big knob. The, the big knob is smooth. So it's a first gen. This okay. is a first gen. So so, so when you took that out of service, Dan, did you find it to be a poorly performing unit that didn't sound good? No. Because okay. this is the unit we used for audio on the show for a good long time. Yeah, we did actually. Uh, and so, if you plugged it in today, it would, it still, would still work. Function, right? It would still for function fine. Yeah. So I think <laughs> there's actually things I prefer about the first gen. Like I like that it has actual physical switches that, when you turn them on, stay in that position. Right. You know, the new one has a phantom, phantom power push button that you have to push and engage, and if you forget, it will be off. Um, yes, there is a fix for that. A lot of people don't know if you install the drivers for Mac, there is a console thing that you can open and permanently set the phantom power on. So that is possible, but still software buttons instead of physical switches. Okay. So I like that when you turn something on, it stays on permanently. Um, so I like that about the older Scarlet, but the new Scarlet is going to have better high headphone level output, a little bit more gain it is that's about it, right? I mean, let's it's see. It's got here. the it's got the new one's got the air button, the air button, which, which almost is, never no one seems to be of help. It's 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 a loop back essentially, so you can play stuff off of your computer back out the, towards the, the one way. I'm thinking of is the air button. That's like a tone button. When you press it, it makes it brighter sounding. Really, that's another thing. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. Did not know that. Yeah, but it, it's it, nobody needs that. <laughs> nobody no, needs no, that. It really um, it's got a monitor button on it to turn monitoring on and off. The old one has a switch. 
I ha- I have not, you know, seen a really solid shootout like saying A B compare them, but um if you've already got a first gen and it's still working without a hitch, without a glitch, day in, day out, and you have no complaints about the noise, sound quality, or anything else, I seriously doubt you're gonna find a, an advantage to use the new one. Yeah. If you're gonna buy something new, go upstream. Go to um uh, you know, the next kind of level. I like the SSL2. Mm-hmm. I think that's a nice up step from this one. Um, yeah, a lot of people are you, using that. Morgan. What do you think is a good level up from the Scarlet series? I was going to say the SSL2. I have not tried it myself. I yeah. mean, I mean, we did that. I shoot. have one now. I should, I'll bring it next time I, I would, come. I would, like, I would like to try that. Uh, you know, we did the shootout a couple of years ago, and we replayed it once. And to me, it was like, as long as it's over $120, it's probably okay. There are ones that really suck. Uh, the real low-end Behringer's. Now, Behringer makes great stuff for live audio. They do audio, make some good stuff. But they're this low-end... The Euphoria stuff is a little, yeah, it's, uh, a little noisy. Yeah, it's really noisy. Yeah. And uh, so, you know, if you stick with the good stuff, the Yamaha... The AG3 or the AG, the AG03 or, or the Steinberg, the, which is their same cousin. thing. Yeah, right. And, uh, you know, and then there's the Mike Port Pro, which our good friend Debbie Derryberry just dropped off here in our studio. She just it's in this in box here. right here. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and, um, you know, that one works great. And she loved it because it had a limiter. And because yeah. she does animation, she has to yell at certain times and as long as you have a limiter it's a safety net it worked and it worked really well for her so it's a safety net so she bought one yeah so i appreciate you lending that to me so i could lend it to her so she could decide to buy one are you paying attention mike goodman we have an (laughs) opening for a sponsor on the show you could fit right in here um anyway <laughs> anyway yeah so yeah we we like the ones we definitely are going to recommend the ones that have the least complex drivers don't have a lot of console software blah 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 plug it in and set the gain and do those what you are the, do. Could be the things that you're going to mainly hear us recommend so absolutely yeah all right bc has a question so, george Yes. You mentioned Echo Cell versus other absorption products requiring gloves. Hmm. Does Oralex foam require gloves, or is it just my hands that get itchy handling it? <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, I, I've huh. never gotten itchy handling. It depends on what you've been <laughs> laying your audio L- R- Oralex in, I suppose. I mean, if you're talking about actual Oralex brand foam, um, I'd seriously doubt. Utterly I mean, if inert. you get itch, if. If your hands get itchy, then you definitely have some kind of a possible allergy allergy reaction to something in that. I yeah, I've never seen that happen really. Yeah, um, it happens with fiberglass and rock wool. De- definitely, you not you do not want to handle rock wool or fiberglass or any of that spun mineral stuff without gloves. It, I wear I wear my flight suit with gloves and taped on. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and a mask when I yeah. work with that stuff. Yeah, yeah, you definitely do not. Uh, if you use any of that stuff, seal it up really well. Um, if you're using um, the cotton-based stuff, you're home free. That stuff has zero toxins, and you can you can sleep on it. <laughs> I mean, it's yeah. or sleep in it, or sleep in it, <laughs> which I always <laughs> if you're do. Desperate. <laughs> um, but uh, if it's made out of uh, glass or minerals, you do not want to really handle it very much. So, um, EcoCell is is just another eco. It's a new eco-friendly version of like a like a fiberglass i don't think it necessarily means you don't want to wear gloves always always follow the you know the guidelines of the manufacturer if they say gloves and mask and mat and goggles then definitely do that yeah um, Th- then he asks are there air quality issues with oralex and other products other health issues to be aware of Thanks. Well, mm. yeah. I mean, now we've we've dealt with off gassing, say, with moving blankets sometimes, and that seems to be an issue. Uh, but some, yeah, some of them have like you know they're made out of very synthetic product, you right. know, that has fluorocarbons or <laughs> some kind of you know synthetics, and it can be stinky. Yeah, you know, some of the blankets. So keep that in mind. I always, when I'm reading reviews of them, I'm reading people's comments saying it's smelly 
yeah. or stinky. Yeah. Um, you can air them out. You can wash them in the washing machine. Actually, believe it or not, take your move, take your freshly purchased blankets. Rich, I'm giving Rich Green credit for this one. Take them to the laundromat, put them in that huge, heavy duty washer, and wash them. I don't know if I would do that with acoustical foam. No, yeah. I don't think that'd be good. <laughs> I don't think it would hold up to that. No, no, probably, uh, but, probably not. But um, the 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 best quality products are very low VOC or no VOC, which is the volatile organic compounds. And uh, you're going to have very little issues with almost any of the modern products coming out. And the stuff that's made with cotton has none of it. The stuff made out of PET, the plastic recycled that actually ends up looking like felt, um, has absolutely no VOCs and, and any odor, and you can handle it. It's great stuff. So uh, we're getting into a post chemical VOC world, or you know, at least a post off gassing smelly world, thankfully. So that's nice to see. Um, other than that, just yeah, read the, read the package, Google it, um, find what the res results are, or at least uh, what people are saying who own the product. And if you have any questions, obviously reach out to us about specific products. Absolutely. All righty, uh, TJ Metzikapo voiceover. Just wanted to say thanks to Dan and George for helping me with sound issues I'm having from a few weeks back. Taking your advice and getting the AT the twenty thirty five. Oh, great. Okay. Problem solved. Oh, it's a, it's an <laughs> awesome, awesome value microphone. It really, it really is. It's never, I've never heard one sound bad. Let's just put it that way. It may not be the best mic you can buy, but for the price, it is an, it is an excellent value. So I'm glad you found it worked out for you. Yeah. I'm trying to remember what the issue was. He sent us some audio and I'm like, you know, you're using a crappy mic. No, it was an AT2020. That's why. Oh, yeah, yeah, It was yeah. an AT20 USB. Now, Boy, they are so close in price, but the 2035 is a whole different class. Yeah, it's, it's about, about $40, $50 more for the, for the 2035. But the, he was on the USB version? I think he was on the AT2020 USB, yeah. Uh, they, the newest edition might be pretty good. I don't remember, but the original ones were pretty, pretty hissy. Yeah. I think it's time yeah. to do a USB mic shootout. Oh, it's time for that again. Yeah, we haven't I mean, done that in years. We huh? haven't done a USB mic shootout. I mean, we've we've done the interface shootout. We did a did we do it at WovoCon in Vegas? Uh, we yeah, did we it. Did we did a mic shootout we there too. We did a USB too. mic shootout in a whisper room. Yeah, well, there were a couple of different mics. We used a few yeah. USB mics. We used a couple of other ones, and but it's been years. It's been like eight years. <laughs> yeah, yeah, since since we did things that. have things have evolved. Yeah, so I and I think there's some really good USB mics out there. You know, there are. Like, you know, the Epigee mics are all really good. And, yeah. you know, and people who are like, you know, I want something that's portable. I'm like, well, here, this is the answer. It'll do everything you want. Rode's yeah. doing some interesting stuff. They're, Even every, that mic right there has USB capabilities. Oh, yes. the uh, This guy. The, the Video Mic Go 2. Go 2. This is great. We were actually using this this afternoon with the, uh, the Joe Cipriano Steadicam. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, and, and you know, and it's a great little mic, you know, and it and it works with your iPhone. Now, the only drawback to it is that it requires a very specific USB cable. Yeah, yeah, it does. Uh, so yeah, you have to order that from them. It doesn't I, come with. I it. I ordered two just in case. Okay, so with that cable, it's like a hundred and thirty bucks. Uh, right? yeah. How much is that cable? That cable was Remember? thirty-four, I think. There you go. So it's a USB mic for about one hundred thirty-five bucks if you buy the special cable. Right. Anyway, but uh, yeah, it's they're getting more and more affordable and better sounding all the time. Oh. Uh, Grace Newton says, um, "I'm shopping for a double wall whisper room." Uncle Roy says, "I'll have to treat it with Oral X and blankets, and for the initial price of that whisper room." Why isn't it a one-stop shop? Well, that's an excellent question. That is a darn good question. <laughs> well, One that uh, we've been dealing with for many years. Yeah. Well, that is changing. Yeah, because the, the fact is, is that, I, that is pe pe people don't get the idea with a lot of these, these soundproof booths. They were never initially designed for voiceover. And if they were... They would there's be, some brands that have that name, vo voice or vocal. Right. They weren't well acoustically designed for for that job. So. Right. You know. But yeah. so the problem is, is they their acoustics aren't that great. They keep sound out for the most part. Yeah. They 
They reduce noise floor. But because a lot of, because a lot of them are, are square or rectangular and have 90 degree angles in them, they require base traps. They require really understanding what needs to make mm-hmm. it not sound like you're talking in a tube. Yep. Uh, and yeah, you've got, you know, and uncle Roy is right because we told him, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you've, yeah, you can use moving blankets in there. You can use Orlex foam, which is, you know, preferred because as we, Orlex foam is made to do what it does. It's, yeah. it's not there to prevent bed sores. Right. You know, it's, uh, it, it really has a chemical composition that, that absorbs and diffuses sound the best of all, all that stuff. All the foam, anyway. Right. But you can also, there are also, you know, other acoustic panels you can use. Yeah. Like anything with the rock wool paneling, like we were talking, like in that interview earlier with Ben, you were here, you heard the word rock wool. Boy, that stuff is incredibly effective, uh, per square foot. It's much better, in my opinion, than the foam. So, um, that's always going to be my, vote like if i was going to buy an eight thousand dollar whisper room i would say give me all the money back for your foam i'm going to put my own panels in there yeah. and it's going to sound a lot better yeah. now they did just release a vocal they finally actually have voiceover edition models of their booths about time so they've been paying attention recently yeah um and i did hear a sample from one recently and i thought it sounded pretty good i was actually surprised but that's because it includes audio mute brand paneling which isn't foam it's actually well i'm not sure what it's on is on the inside but it's not foam and it actually does a much better job but still um your mileage may vary and that and that's only in a four by four size which i i do not recommend going square yeah. go go rectangle whenever possible yeah speaking of which yeah had a deal with the studio bricks last week uh-huh a big studio a double oh, size studio bricks oh wow Custom yeah. one. Yeah. And, it, you know, in a, in a, in a, in a, an old apartment building in downtown Los Angeles. I mean, was, I think the place was a hotel at one time, <laughs> you know, concrete floors, yeah. you know, concrete furniture. No, not concrete furniture, <laughs> but anyway, it was huge and it had a three section roof and they could not get the last section of the roof on. Oh, so no. it's like, okay, so pull it off. It took three of us to get the roof section off and the ring that goes along the top. Yeah. Yeah. And we're like pushing it in. And I'm like, you know, there are hex nuts in here for a reason that ah. hold these sections together, ah. loosen those up, pull it apart, poof, pops right into place. How about that? And then tighten it back up and it was airtight. So. Weren't they glad you came to them? That's what they pay me for. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I, I ain't driving all the way downtown onto Wilshire <laughs> Boulevard for nothing. Well, darn straight. Yeah, every every product like this has to be assembled properly. They might make you think that they're super easy, but the devil's in the details. Follow the instructions, do it in the right order, and uh, and there's sometimes tricks involved. Yeah, and and the floor wasn't quite level. So there, e- I mean, I mean, it yeah. was leveled out. You yeah, know, okay. but there are little tiny gaps where you can might see the yes. dowels and stuff. Yeah. And, but you it know, didn't, it didn't, you know, if you don't see light coming through it, it's, I, it's yeah, I have fine. very rarely, even if you see a small gap on the outside, not, it rarely ever translates to a yeah. noise leak. So, all right. A question from Jeff Holman. Oh, I'm not sure real. if we're allowed to discuss this, but. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually it is, it's in the video. Oh, okay. I mean, it's not in the all edit right. you saw, but in right. the full edit. Right. Uh, you will, you'll be finding that out, but it was definitely north of a hundred thousand. Yeah. How much did it cost to build? Well, that well, was, we, we don't that was for the, the whole ADU. That was for the whole ADU. That like was a kitchen, bathroom. Yes. You know, air conditioning, all the things that went into it. The booth itself. It's kind of really, hard to say. The yeah. doors alone were like four grand. Right. For that pair of doors. <laughs> so, you know, that, that was a big part of it. Uh, the glass. But the rest of it was just tons of labor and time and, you know, of assembling. He said to build, to buy a studio brick of equivalent size would have actually, from what he thought, was going to be more costly than building it. So, and that might be true for that price, for that (laughs) size range, maybe. It depends where you live, depends on how much you're paying for labor. But, um, yeah, it, but it's certainly more soundproof than any studio brick could possibly ever pull off because the walls are 10 inches thick inch and a half uh, air gap 
Right. It is a serious, serious uh, piece of uh, equipment. Right. And, and and he had it built into the wall. It made, became part of the structure. Oh, yeah. It, it looks really like nice. it's just all part of the room. It just belongs there, but it's it's separate. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. And well, then there's some of us that bought a house that had a, had a booth in it. You know. <laughs> it helps. Someday I could be so lucky. <laughs> yeah. I'll try. <laughs> all righty. TJ Metzacapo asks... You guys said my interference was li- a hiss was likely a grounding problem. What's the best way to set the cables to avoid this issue? Well, a grounding problem. Mm. Well, the mic you've got, the one you're using today, my uh, my it's a it's a K47. This is the kit mic. Yeah, the kit mic the that kit I mic built. You built. Yeah. You know, and you know, and turned it on and went, "Holy crap, it works." That was really something. Not a very intricate soldering with that. Yeah. Um some I think the point was is that tube mics and what i mean by tube not because they have a tube in them but because they are tube shaped which is why they're called tube mics and uh sometimes they can get loose Mm. and as long as you tighten things down really tight that makes sure that the uh the grounding within the microphone because it's all connected through you know the ground wire which is the Number three on the, uh, is number three or number one, the ground? I think one is ground, two, and, and two, is two minus the two three phases. is plus or yeah. something like that. Right. Right. But yeah, it's, it's, if that's loose or it's right, it, you will get hissing, you will get buzzing. Um, but hissing generally is an indication that you're not recording loud enough and you're adding more gain. Uh, or you have a very low output mic, mic you right, know, or right. the mic itself is damaged or not functioning correctly so like the an output. sm7b <laughs> or an re20 an sm7b is an amazing mic for being yelled into yeah right right that's that's what that mic's really really good at yeah. <laughs> which is what jocks do on the radio right uh joe rogan does on his podcast and you know uh, uh heavy metal singers do in the studio <laughs> that's what that mic's good for exactly um other, other than that uh in terms of other things you can try um, it's a very long troubleshooting process sometimes because it depends on how much gear you have. If you have a very simple setup with a mic, a USB interface, and a computer, that troubleshooting takes a lot less time because there's fewer things to swap out. But you essentially have to just swap things out one by one. You have to have a duplicate of everything to try and figure out what is the one thing that's causing the noise. That's really what it comes down to. Right. That's the process that I go through one by one. Right. If you look in my closet, there's a pile of cables hanging there. (laughs) Some of them should probably be thrown away. Maybe, (laughs) but they're holding on to other cables, making sure that those cables don't get lost. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) That's the most important thing. Um, He said he tightened his MT1 mic and it's still hissing. Well, it's not hissing then. Uh, I uh, I would definitely reach out to the manufacturer, which in that case happens to be Rode. Um, I would, uh, change, uh, if you've already changed every other variable and already swapped out every other thing, it's probably the mic. And, uh, that's not a mic known for hissing. No. NT1 is known for being very quiet. Right. Very, very quiet. Yeah. But it also has, sl- although their output has improved lately. I, yeah. I think they, uh, they improved the output on the NT1. Oh, maybe. Was it but, real? It was a little lower than other mics. Right. Output, I mean, you had to really, you really had to push the gain on it. Yeah. But, if, if, you know, it depends on the interface. Does the interface have enough gain, the preamp in the interface? So I think it works fine with like a Scarlet. I don't know if I've ever had any trouble. I, ha- I haven't. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, BC has a question uh, based on something we were talking about. The SSL2, which is an interface, included a Vocal Strip 2 plug in, an all in one Compander, Deesser, Deplosive, and three band EQ. Could I use this in a stack for voiceover editions, or does its all-in-one nature limit me? Interesting thought. I, if you're going to put all that stuff in there, I would think that they would include some variables. Yeah, I mean, if they're all just on-off switches, I would be very wary <laughs> of its usefulness because um, an on-off switch processor rarely is a good one, unless it's just a simple limiter like what's in the mic port pro um generally there's a lot of parameters that need to be adjusted now i'm taking a quick google search because i have not yet amazingly played with the vocal strip 2 plugin i i really haven't 
Um, and it looks like it has potential to be very useful. It's got an, e it's got a parametric equalizer. It's got, uh, like you said, a deep closer, mm, de -esser. If you are popping the mic so often, you need a plug-in to fix it. You need to study your mic technique a <laughs> mic little technique bit. Is, because I can go yeah. Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers for the next six years, and I'm not going to get a plosive. And you see no yeah. pop screen here. So. There's no pop screen here either. It's just in the right place, right? Right. Um, it's got a compander, which is a weird word for a compressor Presser. and expander. Um, these are all tools that when used properly by an engineer who knows how to set them and configure them can give you a great result. <laughs> Otherwise I can use the tools included with any DAW and get pretty much all the same results. So yeah, it could be good. Maybe one of these days I'll play with it. Um, I do have a SSL two at home. So I guess that means I have a license to use this $200 plugin. Um, so I'll give it a, a shot yeah. and see what, and see what uh, I think. Yeah. Well, guess what? Another hour of life has gone by, but <laughs> your voice over tech questions have been answered. Uh, and, and enjoyed. And, and thoroughly enjoyed, because as you can see, when George and I get questions, it makes our day, because that's, that's what we're all about. Yeah. Anyway, uh, we're going to take a quick break here, and we will be back to wrap things up for a couple of weeks right after these messages. Yeah, hi, this is Carlos Alas Rocky, the voice of Rocco, and you're watching Voice Over Body Shop. Hey there, I'm David H. Lawrence, the 17th, and with my company, VO Heroes, and my team of coaches, and my community of voiceover talent, we guide voiceover actors along their journey. And you may be watching VOBS here, uh, and not nearly as far along as many of the other people who are watching. You may not even have started yet. And we actually specialize in helping you do just that. So if you're watching all the stuff going on here on VOBS and going, I have no idea what they're talking about. I don't know, but I really want to do this. I'd really like to help you. Please go to VOHeroes.com slash start. That's VOHeroes.com slash start. And you can take our Getting Started in VoiceOver class, which tells you everything you need to get started as a voice talent. And I'd love to hold your hand along the way and help you with that journey. Again, voheroes.com slash start. That's voheroes.com slash start. In these modern times, every business needs a website. When you need a website for your voice acting business, there's only one place to go. Like the name says, voiceactorwebsites.com. Their experience in this niche webmaster market gives them the ability to quickly and easily get you from concept to live online in a much shorter time. When you contact voiceactorwebsites.com, their team of experts and designers really get to know you and what your needs are. They work with you to highlight what you do. Then they create an easily navigable website for your potential clients to get the big picture of who you are and how your voice is the one for them. Plus, voiceactorwebsites.com has other great resources like their practice script library and other resources to help your voiceover career flourish. Don't try it yourself. Go with the pros. Voiceactorwebsites.com, where your VO website shouldn't be a pain in the you-know-what. Before time began, there was VOBS.TV. Watch or else. And we're back to say goodbye. Well, uh, next week, you know, we're going to run an interview that we did, a longer version of the interview that we did with, with Ben uh, earlier in the show, so you can hear all of the details of what into, went into <laughs> that construction, which was quite a bit. Uh, but uh, I'm going to be gone for a couple of weeks, so we're going to be gone for a couple of weeks, but we're going to start up again on May 23rd. We will be live. But look, there are so many episodes that you could possibly be watching if you missed them. Mm -hmm. Go find them. It's, it's, you can watch anything you want, even the old ones, like from get a laugh. Know, yeah, watch from, stuff on the first from season, 2011, of e 2012. Type Ewabs into YouTube and yeah. start to laugh. It's it's all there. Anyway, who are our donors this week? Well, we'll start off with Jonathan Grant, Christopher Epperson, Sarah Borges, Philip Sapir, Tom Pinto, Shelley Avellino, George Whitham, your Brian, dad. That's right, Brian Page, Patty Gibbons, Rob Ryder, Greg Thomas. Hey, Dr. Voice Nathan. Uh, Antland Productions. 
That's Uncle Roy, Shauna Pennington Baird, Martha Kahn, Don Griffith, Trey Mosley, Diana Birdsall, and Sandra Manwiller. Excellent. All righty. You ever notice how when you do the award shows and they read names, they don't do the Dr. Voice, George Widom. They always go, George Widom. Dr. Voice. Brian Page. (laughs) Right. Why is that? That's... (laughs) Because it sounds nice and formal, I, I guess. I, so. I, I guess. <sighs> anyway, uh, again, if you need help with your home voiceover studio, that's what we're here for. You want to work with me? Go on over to homevoiceoverstudio.com. She's so sharp. <laughs> and if you want to work with George, you go to georgethe.tech. And we've got a webinar coming up in May for Audacity. And we have our tech support over there and a coupon code. V-O-B-S fan 2022, which will get you 20% off the next service. You get to use it once. It's a pretty big discount. But if you book any services on the site, you can use that. It's for the scheduled services only. All righty. Well, we need to thank our sponsors like Harlan Hogan's VoiceOver Essentials. VoiceOver Extra. Source Elements. VOHeroes.com. VoiceActorWebsites.com. And and JMC Demos. Demos. Thanks again to Jeff Holman for a great job in the chat room tonight. As always, Sumerlino for doing it from home and still making it look like she's just right. sitting here with us. And uh, we really appreciate that. And of course, Lee Penny for just simply being Lee Penny. <laughs> he knows what that means. And the rest of you are going, what? <laughs> like the last seven years. Like, what? What is who's this Lee Penny? Well, he's got to come visit us and stick his face in here one, one of these, these days. days. Anyway, that's going to do it for us this week. Again, if you've got a question for us, you can write to us at theguys at vobs dot tv, and uh, we'll be we'll put we'll put it in the front of the queue, you know, as opposed to the the, the people who are calling during the show. No, but, you'll be the first one we answer. That's right, because it's there in the email. Or uh, anyway, um. But that's important. Uh, so ask your questions, but we're, we're thrilled to help you out with your home voiceover studio. Uh, but, you know, it, it always it amazes me that people are like, I, it's got to sound great. It's got to sound, it's got to be right. But the bottom line is, if it sounds good, it is good. I'm Dan Leonard. And I'm George Whittem. And this is VoiceOver. Body Shop. Or VO. BS. Tech, Tech Talk. Tech Talk. Tech Talk. Tech Talk. Talk. See you in a couple of weeks, everybody. Have a good one. Bonjour.